All right, traders. This is not Blake Morrow, and it's not Steve either. Steve's going to be here in about five or ten minutes, so I'm going to try and uh, fill in for that before he does the bias chart. Although there's not much more, to, there's not much to say today, but uh, you know, I'll do my best. Um, one thing we didn't mention. Uh, let's start with this on face was the um, the uh, uh, China cut their reserve requirement rate by 50 base points. So they they're acknowledging that inflation is or may be topping. You know, the last inflation print came in a little bit lower than expected, and um, they want uh, you know the, they made this move to try and uh, stimulate a little bit. So you we're getting a little bit of a uh, divergence between China and the uh, Fed or um, even the ECB who are today, you know, they told us that they are, have been discussing, some some people discuss, talked about maybe um, uh, pairing back their asset purchases and the Fed is definitely going to be looking to taper, at least that's what they're telling us. Um, you know, looking at this USD CNH on the daily chart, it's still uh, you know, at uh, what is it, two year lows or near two year lows? So, you know, we could we could easily get towards this um, two hundred uh, day moving average, which is not not far away from here. But anyway, this is something just something to keep keep in mind uh, with the uh, with the Chinese. The dollar we talked about the dollar before. It's difficult. It's difficult to say. I still think we have one more thrust higher, especially if we take out these highs here at 93.40. Um, I think that would be uh, significant and it would definitely take out shorts, uh, you know, remaining shorts. And, uh, you know, we could, we could get to, towards that 94.50 level. And that would be consistent with what I think might probably happen with uh, metals. So gold going down towards uh, 16, 17, probably 1700-ish. Uh, I think we could easily see uh, $200 lower, and that uh, would um, also flush out uh, longs. And, um, uh, you know, uh, I think it would be a great opportunity to get back into um, to, to uh, get back into long positions. Now, I have had and I still have uh, gold and silver longs and miners and a couple of ETFs, um, which for those who are in the chat room, I, I post my updates. I don't trade them very often. I'm more of um, accumulating positions. But I did take some profits on my uh, rare. I have this rare earth metals ETF REMX. I've had this for a couple of months and it's done really well. So I took half of yesterday. I wrote it on on the chat for people who uh, saw it and um, and I have another uh, uranium ETF URA which I like. But I'm trying to keep my exposure to equities because these are um, these were these are equity ETFs, but on a very specific um, uh, sector. I try to keep it uh, my exposure low because I still think that um, even though this is a quiet market, summer market, so equities theoretically shouldn't really have any problems. But uh, you know, at these levels, I think the risk is more for a correction lower than um, the risk reward. Basically, is better. So I, I'm you know I am long some of these ETFs, but I'm pairing back my um, my positions. Uh, currencies, we had a look at DXY. I think the dollar is going to be probably going to have another leg higher. Sterling, um, something I've been talking about since last year, the end of last year. I still think Euro Pound is going to see 83 to 84. That's where I'm going to look to take a my first long in Euro Pound in years, I think. I remember I'm not a day trader. I kind of tend to accumulate positions and then slowly and then unload slowly. Um, cable, cable will depend on the dollar quite a bit, but um, you know, I think uh, again, we're getting close to this 200 DMA. You know, it's all these currencies there, all these dollar pairs, they are not quite there, but they're getting towards important levels. And so, I think if we do get one more push higher in the dollar, then we're going to get um, we're going to get to a point where there's going to be quite a bit of uh, resistance in uh, in dollar pairs. Dollar CAD we saw today, this too is getting very close to the uh, 200 DMA. So it's it's very it's a it's a common theme in all these dollar pairs. And um, uh, again, 
quiet markets in the summer, it's very difficult to um, to time these. So I'm not. I don't have. Um, I don't really have many positions in uh, in, in um, FX. The Aussie is now twenty three point six. Hold on. Let's get. Let's put this right. It's touching the twenty three point six um, retracement. Um, <clears throat> Dollar Norway is one I'm definitely looking at, and uh, I'm, I want to be looking at on the short side. <clears throat> we have entered this uh, zone, which goes quite a far, quite a bit far back, and um, I think close to nine. I'm going to start shorting. It's been a while since I've touched uh, the kroner. I got out of my shorts um, earlier than I should. Steve uh, hold, held on to them quite a lot better than I did. I have to admit that. But anyway. Um, Euro Norway, another one I really want to short uh, when we get to the top end of this, maybe 1050 or something like that. We're getting close to that. Um, and um, uh, what else can we have a look at? Equities, I mean, they're just relentless. It's just, uh, it doesn't even look like a blip now. These, uh, this move yesterday is just uh, completely... Um, you know, going to get completely reversed today, probably. Uh, and this is because, uh, where is it, TNX? It's because yields just are stubbornly low and they are, um, you know, they are at uh, very low levels. And I think the 10-year, uh, you know, as long as we stay below, you know, the breakout point, what was it, 150-ish, uh, there's absolutely no way, I, I don't think equities can um, can reverse. End of story. The Bund is something I'm definitely looking at again. I shorted it last time around 176 something, I can't remember exactly, and I got out, not at the lows, but at around 169 or something like that, 170. I want to do exact exactly the same thing again. I think we're going to try and get to that level, you know, maybe not... Um, quite up there i think anything above 177 i'm going to start shorting and um uh that's my game plan for that um what else can we have a look at cryptos we've talked about many times bitcoin is looking heavy quite heavy even uh, elon's tweet about dogecoin today isn't uh, helping um, much ethereum Probably looking a little bit better than um, than Bitcoin, and um, but again, you know, it's uh, this is not you know this is not something you want to be seeing if you're long. You if you're long, you really want this to break out higher. If not, then I think uh, it's going to be looking ominous for Ethereum as well. It's, it's looking a little bit better than Bitcoin, but still. Um, quite heavy and bitcoin is something very similar you can see that it looks like some kind of consolidating flag or something like that but you know and if that if that re if we do find resistance there uh, then um i think it's going to be uh it's going to be looking ominous and remember we're at the this is a flag within the flag it's uh it's i i still think they're trading very very heavy and i find it very difficult to to get along any of these um uh, otherwise, dollar yen. <coughs> Let's have a look at the daily chart. <coughs> dollar yen is broken out. Actually, I've been looking at this for a while. This was a pretty textbook. Broke out, retested, and it's gone. And um, uh, this has uh, taken all yen pairs with it. And uh, we have to remember that the yen has got a um, pretty good correlation with risk. And, um, you know, with the way th markets are trading at the moment, um, it's difficult to take a direction, at least for me at the moment. Um, uh, what else? Aussie, Aussie Kiwi is something that is worth looking at. I know Amanda's been looking to get long Aussie Kiwi. Uh, I can't remember her levels, but we're still we're still trading at in the middle of this channel. I mean, it's been, and this is a multi-year chart, right? And so it's been very, very stable uh, over the years. You know, both both of these currencies are kind of interdependent. They're very um, uh, dependent on uh, commodities and China, so they they tend to 
move in tandem. But um, this channel here, whenever we get anywhere near the bottom end, so basically below 103, I think it's a very good buy. And anywhere above 110 is probably a good sell, you know, at least for now. So, and I've done this a couple of times over the last few years, but um, uh, if you're if you're a day trader, then it's a very diff different proposition. I, I know Amanda's been looking to get long and uh, this... Um, this run here from 106.50 has been pretty good, but we're now hitting the, the 200 um, uh, moving average. So I don't know. I think she was saying that if we break, what was it, 107.40 or something like that, she's going to add, I have to go back to the chat room and check. And, uh, you know, you definitely do not want to be going against Amanda. That's something I've learned. <laughs> um, finally, let's have a look at oil. Oil um, was, there we go, oil hit this zone and hit it with some force. Remember, it was the, um, it was when OPEC did not manage to agree on, uh, on supply increases. So uh, this zone definitely, uh, you know, proved to be very strong resistance and uh, we've come back uh, a little bit. Do we test it again? Uh, probably, but uh, again, this will all depend on um, risk sentiment, and I don't see how we can avoid the grind higher uh, in equities and in risk in general. So, oil could probably just, uh, uh, you know, go trade around these two levels here, you no know, sixty-five to seventy-five, something like that. Uh, if you if you want to if you want to be short oil, I think it's definitely a very good risk reward if we if we are near these highs again. I might try that actually. Um, so anywhere near 76.50 is a very good risk reward, very defined stop. You know, you stop a little bit above the highs and your downside uh, is um, is pretty nice if you do get it right. Um, that's pretty much what I have. I don't know if Steve is here. It's probably not. So let's have a look at the chat. Natural gas. Uh, what's the ticker for natural gas? I haven't I've never traded it. Um, I think probably Steve is best to have a look at that when he gets here. Oh, is it then gas? <clears throat> yeah, that looks uh, that looks pretty strong. It's very clearly impulsive move here, and we're. Some kind of corrective move here. Sorry, this is on the. Like that. Yeah, so this this looks pretty strong. Uh, oh, I think I can hear Steve. I'm here, mate. Hello, mate. Uh, Amira is asking for natural gas. I went through a few things. There's not much. Not much to say, really, from uh, from the last webinar, but uh, yes, that, that is true. We're going to do the yeah. uh, the bias chart and you know go over yes. uh, questions. Perfect. Well, yeah. I went through a few things and um, good uh, charting there. Yes, the, well, this is mo most likely than not some kind of a bullish consolidation. Naturally, yes, yeah. yeah, yes. As okay. long as we trade above three for three thirty nine, natural gas remains in uh, in bullish mode for sure mm -hmm. okay good all right well i'll um i'll pass you the screen i hope uh, i didn't just... bore i didn't bore people too much no, or are you not you ready don't... yet you never do i'm i'm ready i'm absolutely oh. ready okay oh, there you, there go. you have it uh so i have the buy chart open and ready good stuff that's a good start uh, uh yes so let's bring on the four hour charts and we can start plotting so as always i'm gonna start with a euro here it is so let's see what we have so we've had this nice reaction of the lows as we said yesterday uh but in this uh, series of lower lows we still haven't created a higher low, even in a short term uh, time frame. We did mention yesterday 
that this could form in something like a very, very short term consolidation. So I do think that we should have in the very short term a little bit more upside, at, at, at least a little bit more upside, right? Towards which area is the question? Towards this horizontal support resistance area, which is roughly at 119. I think this is the level we used yesterday as well. So 119 is resistance. And in the very short term, this uh, corrective move low at 118.25 should be support. We break through 118.25, we're probably headed lower after that. Okay. Now, use the Swiss. I'm, I'm noting down everything on the buy side, which is in another screen. And when I'm done, I'm going to... I'm going to bring it in the forefront so you can uh, have a look at it. Let me know if I did any mistakes. <laughs> okay, now <laughs> let's see. As you see, it looks a little bit equivalent, right? It might have been a little flag alternatively like this, right? So in the very short term, this looks like it has more downside to go. Uh, it's very likely. Towards which area? Towards the 0, 90, 90 area. And this spike high, which coincides with this short term horizontal support resistance area at 9175, 0, 9175, should be resistance. Let's move to the cable. Here is the cable. So the cable uh, still finding support at this horizontal support area. And in fact, we can even do this now. Right. If that's the formation we're talking about, then it has potentially bullish implications, right? Uh, resistance, as you see, is very, very, very close. It's like, what is it, like 10 pips higher from where we are. But for confirmation, I'm going to put the previous spike high, in essence, to confirm like that we get a higher high, which is at 138.98, uh, 139, bottom line, 139. We break through 139, and I think we're going to be extending towards 140 at least. Now, support remains 137.50. 137.50 is support. <clears throat> Next one, Aussie and Kiwi. The two currencies from Oceania. That's the name in English of the continent as well, right? Tell you. Okay, Ania. I'm assuming. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I think so. Yes. Or okay. otherwise, the Antipodians. The Antipodians. Yes, yes. correct. <laughs> uh, let's see. Just now, you know, doing some short term. Plotting to see. Now, you know, there is a potential equivalent scenario here, right? Uh, for the descending way. It's a little bit far fetched for the time being. I mean, you know, not that clean. We don't have so many points. You know, if we had like three points uh, per trend line, that would be, you know, much better. In any case, uh, first resistance at 74.80 for the uh, Aussie, 0, 74.80. And support remains 74, I'd say, 18, 0, 74, 18. Kiwi. Uh, somebody can even jump the gun and say, oh, this is a double bottom forming here. Right? Because we retested this low at 69.25, which, of course, is going to be our support area. 0.6925. But of course, for this to prove to be a double bottom, we need to break through 71, right? Then and only then this triggers a double bottom, right? 
anyhow, we have an intermittent resistance area, which is at 7040. And this is the one we're going to put for now. Uh, use the CAD. Use the CAD stabilizing, by the way, despite the very good Canadian data, which is, um, you know, positive for the scenario that we probably have, you know, another high coming. Uh, since, you know, if USDCAD wanted to move substantially lower, it had every excuse to do so following the data, right? So uh, key support at 2430, where the trend line support passes from. 12430. Now, the closest area of resistance is this one, 125.15. And since I don't see a lot of volatility today, I'm going to put this one on the chart, right? On the bias chart. Uh, USD knock. Where are you? There you are. So same type of formation here. Uh, so the trend line, the broken trend line support at 8, uh, 865 roughly is our indicated support. And resistance 881. USDMXN, USDMXN, there you are. Still within this little channel, as I said, you know, looking at it in isolation, uh, you know, I would definitely be looking lower as my main uh, scenario, uh, you know, and it looks much worse than other USD pairs, as I've said. So in my opinion, expressing your uh, bullishness through USDMXN, probably not the best of ideas. This trend line support passes currently from 1976. So that's what I'm going to put on. 1977, let's say it's closer to 1977. And the resistance remains at 2010. 2010. Uh, gold, silver. I know I have a peculiar order of doing things. It's just I don't want to be jumping to different windows. That's why. Nothing has changed with gold and silver. 1814 remains resistance. 1814 support. Since volatility is pretty low, we can move support to 1790. Since I don't see this ending up being a volatile day. And in the case of silver, also nothing has changed. 25.50, and if I remember, 26.60 are the two levels. 25.50 and 26.50 are the two levels. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Thirty point two K, which is also like you know key support. Thirty point two K. Close resistance at thirty five K. Hmm, by the way, I forgot to put uh, biases. Let me do it quick. So uh, bias for Bitcoin remains a range if we're talking about short term, right? Same with silver. Same with gold. If we're talking about really short term. Uh, the biases remain um, uh, range. Uh, in the case of USDMXN, the same. If we're talking more medium term, then the biases would be different, right? So I'm just looking very short term. Um, in the case of USD CAD, it remains bullish as long as we're above the channel. In the case of the Aussie and the Kiwi, they remain bearish because they still haven't broken through a resistance that would put us back to range. So we, we have to give it the benefit of the doubt that they still remain, um, you know, bearish. In the case of the euro and the pound, though, uh, I would be a little bit more conservative because they're doing somewhat better and leave them at range. In the case of the USD Swiss, I'm uh, going to actually put it to bearish. 
and uh, do, 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 what else do we have? No, that's all. Uh, we're going to do the rest as we go over the levels. Now, use the yen and DXY. Use the yen as long as we trade below this broken channel. First of all, my bias has to be short term bearish. So let me put it there. Resistance is a back test of this. Uh, let's say 110.35. That's resistance, 110.35. Support will have to be the spike low, which is also the 50% FIB at 109.56, 109.56. And we can switch to the DXY. Where are you? There you are. DXY, testing support as we speak. Here it is in this potential ascending wedge. We break through that. We open the door for a, a retest of the beginning of the wedge, roughly 91 and a half, right? So keep that in mind. There we go. But I don't want to put support where we currently are. So I'm going to put the previous spike low as the first support at 92. 92. I'm going to leave it at range for the time being since we haven't broken down yet. And the resistance is this, uh, you know, today's high in essence at 92.50. Quite a tight range, but, you know, we don't have a lot of volatility today. And as I said, I'm going to leave it to uh, range, you know, as a short term outlook for just today, right? Now, last but not least, the S&P. Now, you know, as I was explaining yesterday, there are two ways to read this chart. One is that we had this little ascending wedge from which we broke below. So if we get rejected from back testing it as we do now, we remain short term bearish for a move towards 4267, which is a more serious support level. There is also, though, the alternative interpretation, which is this one, right, that we had a corrective move unfolding in the form of a megaphone, uh, in which case we might have already found a low, right? Now, um, trend following should favor. Uh, taking the megaphone formation as the main scenario, right? And keeping our bias to bullish until proven otherwise. Um, the other one is very short and bearish. So, you know, torn between the two of them, I would leave it to range for today. With resistance clearly being, since we are already where we are, uh, resistance is where we currently are. But since I don't want to put the level we're currently trading at, I'm going to put the all-time high as an obvious you know, upside resistance for 1,366 and support being this first spike high at 43.31. I think we break through 43.31 and then we, we have in hand this scenario um, uh, that we were going to be seeing a lower low probably towards 42.67. Okay. Uh, and let me bring, Stelio, are you still here, by the way? No, he's not. Yeah, I just saw that he wrote to me. So let me also take a screenshot of this. There we go. So I can send it to him. And in a few minutes, he's going to post it. There we go. Sending it to Stelios. Now, let's see. I'm closing this and let me go through your questions. By the way, uh, since I was a little bit delayed today, uh, you know, one flaw, uh, I don't know if it's a flaw or if they've done it on purpose because they think, you know, it's uh, uh, because they think that, you know, it's a better idea if the um, if people, you know, join later, perhaps something has been said, uh, you know, during their absence or something uploaded and they, they don't want to see it. But bottom line, uh, what I want to say is that I don't have the um, I don't have the questions that you posted uh, prior to my arrival. So if you posted something before you heard me being on the webinar, um, you know, please uh, retype the question so I can uh, 
um, you know, so I can get to it. Natural gas, yes, absolutely. First of all, crude oil. As we speak, back testing this broken channel as resistance. Also, notice that this horizontal support resistance area acted here as resistance, 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 support, resistance is also more, almost confluencing with this trend line, right? So, bottom line, pivot area for crude to decide if it wants to correct even further or not is 74.50. So this is something I wanted to mention anyhow. And since the question went to natural gas, why not mention crude oil as well? Here's what I see in natural gas, by the way, if we're talking about short term, right? Uh, megaphone formation, most likely. So I think this is likely bullish consolidation. until proven otherwise. How do we prove it's something different? Going back to the daily chart, 3.39 is a key level, right? So as long as we trade above 3.39, there is absolutely no reason to be bearish. Yesterday, we posted on the daily chart, by the way, tweezer bottom having to do with the candlesticks. So that's also like, um, uh, you know, um, a positive development for the bullish case. Uh, so yeah, two of you asked for natural gas. That's good. Uh, I think this is what the English people call killing two birds with one stone. Okay. Uh, now, FDX and UPS. Is FDX FedEx, by the way? Yes, it is FedEx. I assumed right. So last time we had a look at FedEx, I mean, we had multiple looks at FedEx from what I see over time. Um, I assume that this is going to break down and it seems to be doing so. If this trend line of resistance the support holds today as resistance, I think you should keep looking lower and looking at the bigger picture, this can unfold to a more complex, longer term correction before we can move higher, right? So keep that in mind. Now, the bullish case scenario to have an alternative interpretation here and respecting the fact that, you know, we're in a longer term uptrend needs a breakout from this trend line resistance that I just drew, right? So, This is the bullish case scenario. So the good thing is that you have, we are at a nice juncture, right? And we're going to know soon which of the two is playing out. As we stand where we currently are, Short term, at least, uh, I favor the bearish case scenario, right? And UPS. UPS is likely breaking out, actually. So it seems to be going the opposite direction. As you see. I, I don't have to redraw something here. I mean, nothing has really changed, for, uh, technically speaking. So, you know, oppositely from FedEx, it seems to have a much more clean chart, uh, impulsive move higher, consolidation over time rather than correction in price, impulsive move higher. And so far, this looks like a channel that's breaking higher that has purely corrective characteristics. So, yeah, looks bullish. There is a downtrend in FTX from 21.521. Let me go back to the FedEx chart then, FDX. Twenty-one 
21 of May. Uh, according to my chart, 21 of May was this day over there. So what downtrend? Because we, we went higher than that. This is the 21st of uh, May candlestick here. Ah, 27. Yeah, the one I drew here, you mean then? This one. Yeah, so the one I drew here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. That's why I said as long as we trade below this trend line, you know, I, I favor the short term bear scenario. We break through that trend line and then you should be looking higher. So, you know, we're very close to that pivot area. So from a risk reward perspective, shorts look very appealing here because you're risking very little. But we break through this trend line and, you know, I think at, at least temporarily we're going higher. Um, okay. What else, guys, girls? What else do you want to say? Uh, I don't have much else to say than what I said before on uh, on face because today has been, you know, an uninteresting day. Uh, you know, equities unfortunately haven't produced the follow through we would have wanted yesterday, which of course is not like a big surprise. How many times have we seen this? before right that's why i always keep my expectations rather low <laughs> having to do with these markets and uh you know equity sell-offs um but on the other hand i don't think we have enough in hand to say you know oh yeah we we should immediately like start selling dollars buying risk assets i think we need to give it a couple more days to see what the market has decided SMH, XRT, MRNA, SMH. SMH, uh, this starts getting more and more complicated. And I don't like this. This price action is uh, not what you want to see because it now, it now forces me to just give it more time, right? Because it, it, it produces little false moves. And look at this, it looked perfectly like a little bull flag. Uh, it seems we are in some kind of a prolonged consolidation. So I really don't know. We we might have just even had like a little false break higher. So I, I think you need to give it more time and not trade it for the time being since it's not playing ball. I mean, it doesn't want to do a clean breakout and whatever. So, um, you know, you need to give it more time. We're clearly in some type of a consolidation, right? We've been in one since the end of 2020. Uh, and the fact that we didn't manage to break out there, despite, you know, being above this trend line is not good. It means that we're not ready to move higher. We also gapped lower. So I think in the short term, we might see uh, further pullback within the context of this uh, formation, right? So I, I would hold off here. Yeah. Same thing here. An undecided market, you see, it attempted to break lower, changed its mind, broke higher. RSI still chopping around in neutral territory. So this is also important to note. As you see, we haven't been in overbought or oversold conditions for quite some time. So this is a market that currently has no direction, as you can also see from price, right? So this market has no direction for the time being, which means that you need to remain more patient and probably give it a couple more days even after it breaks out because you know it has to prove that it actually wants to move. So basically, I wouldn't be trading any of those two markets as we speak. Yes, they're interesting to monitor and they, they, they might produce a nice trading opportunity, but not yet. Uh, MRNA, Moderna turned higher yesterday, cre creating a beautiful bullish engulfing candlestick, which is a very bullish candlestick, which adds fuel to the interpretation that this was another bullish consolidation, right? So keep looking higher there. SMH double bottom. Uh, let me see what you're talking about. 
Where do you see the double bottom, mate? Double bottom? Certainly not. This is a triangle, if it's anything. It's not a rectangle. Double bottom would need, you know, a second low, uh, almost at the same level. I mean, it, it can be a few pips, like five, ten pips higher or lower, but not that much. So this is probably some kind of a bull, bullish uh, triangle, right? That has a higher chance of breaking to the upside. But nobody says since we had this false breakdown that we can't have a further pullback before we can end up breaking higher, right? Anything else you're looking at, guys, girls? Okay, then. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you back on Monday. Enjoy and charge up your batteries. And let's hope we get some more volatility and not just half a day again. Bye-bye, all.